Hello guys and girls, welcome back to another episode on the Falcon YouTube channel. So back with another student sit down, joined with me, Connor. Connor, how's it going? Good, thank you very yeah. much. Yeah, great. So really, really excited to have you on. Of course, we've done the podcast before this yeah. time, you know, you're over in the UK at the moment. Yeah. Um, you're actually living here, right? At the moment. I am living here. Well, partially living here. I've yeah. been here for two and a half months now and, and yeah, it's been great. Yeah, awesome, yeah. awesome. So. Um, We've already done a podcast with Connor in the Falcon community, but we thought this would be a great opportunity just to share more because I think in person you can portray a lot of things sure. a little bit more. So yeah. it'd be cool to get into your story, how you felt. So are you, um, how long are you in the UK for? Are you kind of partially here and back in Australia? And yeah, like so uh, I was planning to be here about six months, uh, yeah. potentially longer, came down with kidney stones, unfortunately. So I'm heading, oh, back, no. to, uh, heading back to Australia. Um, very very soon so that's kind of cut my six months short mm -hmm. um, so yeah I'm, I'm heading back to Australia and then uh, spending t summer time in Australia mm -hmm. escaping the cold British winter weather um, and then I'll come back here in April next year oh so you uh, will be back so I will be back I will be back I, I do like London yeah. Yeah. Uh, so have you enjoyed the kind of the small stint of you being here it's been great it's been great I mean the, again the amount of people I've met uh, the networks that I've developed uh, the connections I've made um, some very very interesting characters that I've that I've met um, mm -hmm. over the, the past two two and a half months has, has been good which is kind of why I came here really mm -hmm. um, so yeah it's proved to be uh, to be a very positive two and a half months. Yeah, is that to kind of level up your own trading or just be surrounded by more successful people? Both, both. Yeah. To not only level up my trading, but yeah, to network with people and surround myself with that kind of really positive environment, mm -hmm. which is something I felt that I lacked in Perth. Mm -hmm. um, I just needed that challenge. I need to kind of stimulate my mind a little bit more mm -hmm. and, and uh, yeah, kind of grow as a person. I mm -hmm. thought only the, you know the best way to do that was here in London. One hundred percent. And for the for the viewers listening, you know. It, meeting you for the first time. So you're a you're full time trader? Yeah, full time yeah. trader. Yeah. So I've been full time for about a year and a half now. Nice. And how has that kind of been for you in terms of emotions and uh, scaling and account? So do you, you solely live off your trading? Yes, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. so I kind of run background sort of, uh, I guess a portfolio of different other investments um, mm -hmm. alongside trading, but trading the foreign foreign exchange market mm -hmm. is, is sort of my, my primary income. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I've been doing that for over five years. So now I've um, you know, been full time for about a year and a half. Mm -hmm. So it's been a long transition from almost being full time learning to yeah. full time trading and mm -hmm. actually living off the income and building that capital up. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's been a yeah, it's been a, a a good journey and, and yeah. you know come a lot come across a lot of sort of setbacks and, and a lot of breakthroughs as mm -hmm. well in that. Um, but again, that's just part of the journey, isn't it? Hundred <laughs> percent. You know, we have the ups, we have the downs, and I think people are under this illusion, right? That even when you're trading capital, even when you're consistent, yeah. that you can't have a bad month, sure, or you can't have a bit of a bad patch. You know, like you've got, you know, a health issue at the moment. You've yeah. got to go back there. That could, I'm not saying it will, but that could affect your trading. Oh, for sure. And you know, that doesn't necessarily necessarily mean now you're a bad trader if that happens or something. Yeah. Else. And I think people live in this kind of fantasy world that once you're consistent. There you go, you got it. Yeah. You need to maintain it, which is why like surrounding yourself with people in a community, things like that, I think it's so important because you've had stuff like you've had let's talk about, you know, when you had um, the emotions of how it felt when you had your first sort of six figure month. Mm -hmm. How did that feel? You know, six figures in one month, that's a respectable wage for someone in a whole year. Sure. Probably more than what you've earned previously in a yeah. whole year. Yeah. That you've done that in one month. How did that kind of feel for you? It was, it was interesting. Um, I was kind of, at that point, I was almost at a level where, not to say that I had fully conditioned myself to accept that mm -hmm. kind of six figure return, but yeah. almost visualized it to the point that when I actually achieved it, 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 it was really good. It mm -hmm. felt like it was a good feeling at the mm -hmm. beginning, but it didn't last long. It yeah, was like, it okay, I've hit that six figure. Great. That's a mm -hmm. great achievement. It's, mm -hmm. you know, it's a, it's a goal of mine that I had for so, so long. Um, and or sorry, a milestone that I had for so so long, and mm -hmm. then as soon as I you know realized that and, and hit it, I was like, okay, well, on to the next month kind of yeah. thing. Um, and you bought yourself a watch. I bought myself a as watch a as, as the present <laughs> to the milestone. Yep, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, and again, that's kind of how I structured my goals now, yeah, more yeah. so milestones and rewards. Um, so yeah, again, the watch signifies that yeah, month. Exactly the same for um, me. I think you kind of lose. It gets to a point where. You know, and this is not saying that we're worth hundreds of millions or anything like that, but it gets to a point where you can access a certain lifestyle. Yeah. You can do what you want, buy what you want, 
and then the desire for that kind of loses. I mean, if you want to go buy another Rolex, you just go and buy one. It, what's the point? You Absolutely. Know, just yeah. because you can afford something, guys and girls, I think to get people's head in this right mindset, I think as trading, you start off, all you want is materialistic possessions. For sure. But what is far more empowering is that you know, and I'm not saying that you can't have a monetary figure goal for six figures and things like that, because I get it, you want to focus on it. Mm -hmm. Once you hit it, like Connor, like you then are, you then rewarded yourself with that, with a watch that symbolizes something far greater yeah. than the kind of mindset it takes to get. That. Sure, and did you did you feel that when you were in the beginning stages, you were more materialistic than you are now, obviously. Oh, did you find that that was just a natural process from going from, you know, materialistic to more spiritual and, and kind of developing that? Aspect? Yeah, I, I feel like it got to a point where I started started getting excited over this little things and not the big things. Right. So I remember the point when I, I had a friend round actually and uh, and then he said, uh, and he'd been with me for quite a while, for a couple of weeks, uh -huh. and he just said, don't you have a McLaren in the garage? <laughs> and I kind of just like forgot. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, yeah, I do. He's like, when's the last time you drove it? It was like three weeks ago. It's just like, you right. get to a point in which that, when you start to have those feelings, and I'm not saying everybody that has a McLaren or a Ferrari, that's how they're gonna feel, sure. but it got to a point where I'd, I ticked off so many materialistic goals where it just kind of felt like almost empty, like it right. doesn't make you happy. And I realized that having the discipline to do something and then treating yourself as, right, I've done this now, now reward myself. So there's a particular watch that I want, mm -hmm. which is a, another AP, okay. but it's, it's one that, uh, it's the chronograph one, the uh, brown leather strap with the rose gold face. Oh, useful, yeah. Right, uh, I want to pick it up in Dubai. I can go pick it up now, I can fly there and get it, but what's the point? Right. What does it achieve? Right, You know, when, when you can just go get something, it's just like, it's not really a goal. It loses the value of the yeah. actual watch itself. You know, like, I like to achieve goals that symbolize something. The best thing that I'm sure, you know, you've, you've done this now, the best thing for people to really push themselves mm -hmm. is actually not to focus on the materialistic, because there's nothing wrong with having a materialistic goal, right? If you want a watch or a car, etc. But if you've got that goal in front of you, maybe treat it as a reward of achieving something else. Yeah. You know, let's say you have three consistent months or six consistent months, and now you've done that, you're like, right, trade in a certain amount of capital, now as a reward, I'm gonna go get this car, I'm gonna put a down payment on this car. Sure. Then you feel better about your goals as well. Have yeah. you kind of felt that oh, across the board now? Absolutely, I mean, again, it wasn't until I, you know, I, I learned from you yeah, and yeah. how you structure your, your milestones and your rewards and your goals for that, um, that I, switched and that's yeah. how obviously I structure mine now and, and again I, I, I find it far how better. How much more empowered do you it's, feel? Yeah for sure and when yeah. you actually do achieve it you feel good for achieving it because you, you've kind of earned it in a yeah. sense yeah. Um, and it's all been your doing um, and your effort that's that's kind of got you to that point. Mm -hmm. So yeah it, it definitely empowers you to to push on and, and you know hit these certain milestones to, mm -hmm. to get what you ultimately desire. Mm. Um, and I think it's kind of interesting in your journey now where like you're a full-time trader, you know what it takes, you're used to you know, banking the kind of profit that people make in a year, in a month, yep. and then how do you kind of manage that in terms of almost like paying yourself in that sense, that does your mind go to the point, because this is where people, they get very fixated off, I've pulled this, let's withdraw this, where how I personally do it, and you know, it'd be interesting to know how you do it as well, how I do it is that I like to give myself something for the year. I know this is what I need to live on, and I don't mean, you know, strapped for cash, not that kind of thing. Sure. But this is the kind of lifestyle I have, and this is what is really comfortable. Whether I spend all of that or not, that that doesn't matter. Yeah. If I want something, I'm just going to get it. If I really want something in terms of that's something that I need, for example. But I think that you get to a point where you just realize you learn to love your processes, your daily routines, mm -hmm. and you spend your money wisely. And the same old saying that, you know, if you're looking at someone with, you have two people, we've seen this picture before, one person's got a 300 pound bag, one person's got a 20 pound bag, mm -hmm. the other person's got 280 pounds in it, and the other person's got nothing yeah. in it. Yeah. You know, you're trying to look rich, you want to be rich. Sure, <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. How have you kind of found uh, your way of that? Did you get to the point where you saw the money and thought, hold on a minute, I want to take this and spend this? Or did you kind of take a step back and say, no, I want a bit more of a process for this? Yeah, definitely a bit more of a process for it. Um, again, my ultimate goal is, is far bigger than trading itself and far bigger than, you know, making a million dollars. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's something that is a driving force to be like, okay, well, let's, you know, let's compound this over time. Let's mm -hmm. build this capital mm -hmm. so that I can actually go and do bigger and better things with mm -hmm. it over, you know, over the long run. Um, so for me, yeah, I mean, Making six figures, it sounds great, but you know, it loses its, it's just a, it's just a figure, it's just a digital yeah. number at the end of the day for me. And um, it's not gonna happen every single month. This is where no, for sure. they think, right, I've hit it, 
every month now. That's not how it works. You yeah. can still have a rocky month. You could still have a negative month. Yeah. You know? I mean, yeah. This this month in October, I yeah, I, uh, I, I was minus two. So. Mm. You know, that I lost money there, yeah. but it doesn't affect me from a you know a psychological or emotional standpoint. Um, it is what it is. You get you get good months, bad months, and you know that your yearly performance. That's the only thing that people care about. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah, that's what investors care about. That's what you should care about. Sure. Has your mind? I'm sure it has now. Well and truly shifted into quarter to quarter. Yeah. One month means nothing. Yeah. Do you feel good about your quarter to quarter? Is yeah. that how you're kind of looking at your performance at the moment? It is, it is now. Um, I was, I mean, I've been looking at this sort of month to month for quite a, quite a long time, mm-hmm. and I definitely felt the negative effects of doing so. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, again, when you came to, you know, minus month or, or you know, anywhere from the low figures mm-hmm. um, from a return or percentage standpoint, it, from a monthly basis, it started to play on my mind a little bit too much. Um, but now I'm purely focused on the quarterly and the yearly. Obviously, mm-hmm. the yearly, you, you know, the re- yearly returns are, are what matter and what count. So, um, yeah, for me, it's quarterly and then onto the yearly at the end of the year. So. 100%. I mean, you could have, like you said, minus two. Next month, you could have plus 10, then plus yeah. 12. If you knew that already, would the minus two matter? Not well, at all. Probably not. Not at all. If you're focusing on the monetary value, it probably does because you just see it as, you know, I've had a bad month. Yeah. There is no good and bad months. No. It's just... It is what it is. It's a hard thing to explain to someone who doesn't know what that feels sure. like or means. And it's or, also, yeah. sorry, sorry to yeah, go in there. It's, it's also just um, trusting the market, that the market will play out mm. over time. Uh, again, over the three quarter, four quarters of the year, mm. over the year, over the next few years. So mm. it's, it's also trusting that um, and trusting your ability to be able to you know, adapt with that. So mm-hmm. you know, it's the confidence and the self-belief that I have within myself um, that that kind of thing, that you know, that negative month or the slightly mm-hmm. positive month or the big months don't really affect me anymore. Yeah, yeah. It just is what it is. Mm-hmm. So. So, and, and it's of, of course taking time. You know, for people listening that are, let's say, struggling or don't really have that empowered inner belief, because you know we've spoken about you know conversations even in Australia when we met um, about self sabotage, sure. how people just self sabotage themselves, yeah. and they're really great traders, guys and girls, and this could go for all communities, but they just find a way to fuck it up. Yeah, and and so what would you say that's helped you so for you to feel because you feel empowered? I can tell mm-hmm. when I talk to you and things like that. Yeah. you're structured, you're focused. It is what it is. You get this game now. Sure. For someone who doesn't, what's helped you break through? Is there any processes you've done? Any things that you're doing now that you think would help someone who's struggling? Yeah, I mean, I mean, I I go back to structure again, routines, mm-hmm. habits. I mean, it's so so powerful, so powerful to stay on track and maintain the momentum um, because I find from well, from myself and from my own journey that when I'm not structured, when I don't have a good routine and, and when I'm sort of slacking my habits, everything else sort of takes a tumble. Mm-hmm. Um, so for me, yeah, structures, routines and habits, big, big, big one mm-hmm. for me and, and definitely most powerful. Um, and yeah, just kind of um, just trust, trusting in your skill, trusting in the trading, trusting in your learning and, and always sort of maintaining that that drive to, to something bigger. Um, you know, I'm definitely interested in you know what makes up a consistently consistent person mm-hmm. um, and that doesn't have to be you know related to trading mm-hmm. as such it's just generally specifically what it what makes up that person why are they so consistently consistent um, it's funny I know a guy in, in Perth who is 85 years old mm-hmm. still works out every day is, is shredded mm-hmm. um, and I'm always like well what is it that makes up his drive mm-hmm. um, and I think for people in this trading game as well is, is what makes up your drive mm-hmm. um, what are you striving for and, and just trust yourself that you will make a success out of it. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, self-belief, routines and structures, big one. So almost going on like a self-discovery point of view is everybody's journey is going to be different. We know that, we've seen that. Just watching Cad Yen, just yeah. fluctuating. Yeah. Right <laughs> Dropping <laughs> slightly. Cad Yen, but No, I didn't. I was I set an entry order, but my broker didn't fill me, unfortunately. Ah, uh, no. So I've got what about of- S&P? S and P M short, yeah. Uh, you went from the top, or the, yeah. The, the little center? correction. Oh, you yeah. Got the flag. The little flag. It, it was it was pretty much like for like. Sorry to go off topic. Here, <laughs> it was pretty much um, a like for like for the dolly M position where it created that push up the fifteen minutes. Sure, drop. yeah, yeah. That was a decent trade. It was literally like for like. I got in with the risk entry. Right. I know uh, Jake and Neil got in with the uh, the break of the flag like you. Right. Uh, but yeah. a really really nice entry. Yeah. Um, when that kicks in, I mean, just shifting into that a little bit. Are you expecting quite a volatile year for 2020? Uh, I think so. It's, it's looking yeah. like it's going to pick up. Yeah. Um, obviously, we, you know, the first, probably uh, first, second and third quarter were maybe a bit slower, especially, you know, yeah. the halfway through this year yeah. were slightly slower. 
slower. Mm -hmm. um, but again, it's that's just the market conditions. Mm -hmm. You get corrective phases, you get impulsive phases, and I think definitely the momentum is obviously starting to kick in now. So it's going to be a good end to the year and, and definitely a good start to uh, to 2020. Mm -hmm. and, and, and and doing I think remaining for for your success as well and lots of other successful people in the community, your ability to do what you're doing now. Mm -hmm. even through a period that maybe is not so fast and accepting that right I'm going to do this I'm going to follow the system and it may not perform for me the results I want every single month but I know over the long haul it will and I won't change things up yeah. just to suit that or for example I'm going to put an EMA in now and I'm going to do that have you, you ever ever chase, yourself chase doing, something else have you ever caught yourself doing anything like no, that no not EMAs I mean I kind of have gone through that phase mm -hmm. um, before joining Falcon mm -hmm. um, and obviously it wasn't working for me so mm -hmm. why change something that's working now um, obviously you know there is things that I'm always adapting to the market and always changing mm -hmm. um, but I take that kind of lessons, that learning from you know things like back testing and understanding yeah. what the market evolution is, looks like, mm -hmm. um, but nothing drastically changes. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, finding small patterns that work over time and of back course. testing that obviously, um, but yeah, nothing like support resistance or EMAs. Um, I've, yeah. I've never been one to jump into the, those if, if a strategy isn't working. Yeah, and I, and I think that really shows um, for someone who does chop and change, a very unstable mind. Because if yeah. you lack belief there, over a small sample size, you'll lack belief somewhere else. And then, I mean, God forbid you get given more capital, then exactly. you're, well, imagine, you you're, trading, imagine you're trading half a mil, you're trading a million pounds, and then you have the same habit that you've created on a smaller account yeah. to then say, I'm gonna add an EMA now. Are you gonna do that at scale? Probably not. And guarantee it's gonna be difficult yeah. when you do scale up. Of course, of course. Mm -hmm. You know, those questions, I talk about it a lot. Asking yourself, is this a scalable trade? Would I take this trade? How does that feel for you, trading larger capital, where you know myself, coaches, we feel exactly the same. When we take a trade, we're not thinking about, I could make 30% here. We're yeah. thinking about, can I manage this risk? And is this a scalable trade? I've always had that sure. mindset till now. Yeah. And I'm still thinking about it now, that scale right. for more scale. <laughs> right, scale you for know? scale, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, I, again, I'm in the same same boat. Uh, you know, the monetary figure or what I'm trading doesn't really cross my mind. It is the fact that okay, how can I manage this position? Does this manage? Um, does this trade suit my plan? Um, and how can I execute as accurately as possible um, so that I don't deviate from from something that yeah. isn't in my plan and not something I've tested before? Yeah. Um, obviously, you know, things change in the market. You know, big impulses uh, might. Give you a bit of slippage here and there, but um, you know, sticking to your plan and just yeah, just being being truthful to, to you and how you how you trade as a trader and, mm -hmm. and yeah, sticking to that. I, th I think it's really important. I think you've got a really well-rounded kind of structure that you're on the self-discovery. You're mm -hmm. always open to change, always open to actually learn, yeah, as well as change because you can't just learn. I mean, we could read books and books and books, but if you're not willing to change your habits, you know, right. you become successful in the first place. Absolutely, right? always remain teachable, as you as you always yeah. say. Yeah, pe people get stuck in that mindset. I think of learn, 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 learn. Well, how can you apply if you're not willing to change? Right. You could know everything about everything, but if yeah. you're still not waking up at five a.m. when you need to be. You're not going to get it done. Exactly. And again, everything is so correlated. Um, I find anyway, you know, routines, structures, all correlate to how I perform in the markets, mm -hmm. all correlate to how I feel as a person. Mm -hmm. It's it's highly correlated. So trying to keep that on track 24-7 mm -hmm. throughout all throughout you know the year mm -hmm. um, is is what I'm really focused on mm -hmm. and, and always try and maintain that as best as possible. I think something that's helped me and it may help you as well is that one discipline affects another. That's always been in my head all the time. Right. So if that affects that, that's going to affect that and it's going to affect the circle sure. of what you have. Right? Yep. Mm -hmm. So if you can think in a point of view that it's okay to go out the circle sometimes because you cannot be perfect all the time. The situation you've got now, you've got to go back to Australia. Yeah. That's almost like going out the circle a little sure. bit because you had the plan, it happens, but you overcome it. Sure. And I think people you know, that are not at the level of scale yet, yeah, you need to think about if you set some goals, five daily goals for the day and you don't tick them off, it doesn't mean that you have to go then and have a conversation and shout yourself in the mirror, mm. you know, David Goggins stuff. And I'm not <laughs> David Goggins, by the way. Yeah. But you don't always have to beat yourself up about it, is what I mean. You know, take responsibility and take action, but understand that, you know, you can have a bad day, that's fine, but that's not going to make or break you. That's one of my almost yeah. mantras. Yeah. What, you know, not one bad day, month, or week will make or break you as a trader. So I think that's so important on the, the, the bad side and the good side in yeah. terms of it, because you feel invincible when you have an incredible month, you're like, done now, sure. consistency is here, I've arrived. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Would you say that's just your ego coming through? Of course. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. Because you feel, you know, invincible. You feel like, I'm going to be right now. It goes right. back to the same thing that when people say, they say it to me, for example, I actually got messages today saying, oh, 
oh, you called that one right on Kajian. Right. And in my head, I'm like, because I think in probabilities, sure. it's hard for me to call right or wrong, because then I beg the question, did I call Kajian right? What is profiting? Well, what if I took that same setup on Aussie Yen and it right. didn't play out? Did I call it wrong if it was a high probability? Or was it probabilities that didn't play out? Probabilities so am right. I ever actually calling something right or am I calling it wrong? Well, yeah. I'm not, I'm not. I'm just taking the setups as they come. Sure. And I think if we get too caught into this, yeah, you called that, your ego is just loving it. You, yeah. know, you shouldn't even care about that. Yeah. You know, I ignore messages like that. I'm not saying <laughs> I ignore messages from guys and girls, but you get the point that I don't allow my ego to get involved in that right. because I could go back through prediction after prediction and kind right. of build up this ego in my head as like, Oh wow, you you like you called that. Like, right. You see what I mean? It doesn't yes. serve me as a trader. Sure, it'll actually harm my results. Right. So I, I step away from it. Interesting. Massively. Yeah, yeah. And how? What kind of techn techniques do you find help by doing that? Feeling neutral. Well, right. So feeling that kind of place. Yeah. Gratitude, hundred percent. Remembering mm -hmm. the little things. Yeah. Going back to why I'm doing this in the first place, and actually remembering who I want to be. So I have in my goals, good old journal right here. Good old very journal. old journal there, by the way. <laughs> um, just going back to who I want to be. So I, I'm very clear and content on who I am. Yeah. So I don't allow that to happen anyway. Right. I, okay. I know the kind of person I want to be. I mean, we've lost this kind of, in the Forex world, it's all about money, look at this, look at my cars, all this kind of stuff. It's yeah. very in your face. And we've forgotten how to be private. It's so strange, we've mm -hmm. forgotten how to be private. You know? yeah. My investors are worth hundreds of millions. Mm -hmm. I drive a 20 grand car. Yeah. People like different things. We're so caught up into this minuscule percentage of people that have just come into money. Because normally, people that have just come into money, they will show you that they've just come into money. Right. And this yeah. is from being surrounded by successful people. Sure. Because just suddenly, as soon as they have money, lifestyle completely changes, mm -hmm. like drastically. Yeah. And when they make more and more money, they just find more things, you know, 6,000 pound jackets that they probably don't need, mm -hmm. that they'll sell later for a loss. Yeah. And they don't think like an investor and they're not smart and they'll judge people that are actually far more wealthier than them, that have a portfolio, mm -hmm. that have investments and things like that. Mm -hmm. So for me, I know who I am. Right. So as long as I know who I am, that's the most important thing. And yeah. then that doesn't allow things like the ego. So it's not really a technique in the sense, but it's more so a process of figuring out and being content with who you are. Okay. I love who I am. Yeah. Love myself, your self-love, all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. But you know, and I think you're the same in but I know you're on the self-discovery and we can always improve, but yeah. you seem like someone who's pretty sure of itself that you know who you are and you don't need to flaunt and things and you do very well, you know? Yeah, again, it's being aware of myself, it's aware of what I'm doing, how I'm feeling uh, in any given moment and mm -hmm. being able to change that or make certain, um, you know, certain uh, changes if I am not in the best state or I'm, I don't feel I'm in the best version of myself. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, that hyper, always hyper aware. I'm always like, oh, do I feel, why do I feel, you know, you know, negative today, or mm -hmm. again, it's like I probably talked about on the on the podcast. I rate myself from an energy level, yeah, how I that. wake up in the morning, or certain inspired level, um, mm -hmm. how I wake up in the morning, um, and that often indicates and tells me, okay, there's maybe something wrong, and that's just being aware. Um, there's something wrong. Uh, let's change something in my in my routines or my habits to be able to put me back on track. And I bet you could track it the night before if you didn't plan your goals. There'd yeah. be a difference. Sure. Yeah. Absolutely. And yeah. certain, it's, it's the smallest things that can trigger trigger that 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 way waking up feeling under a five, smallest things. Mm -hmm. um, going to bed too late, you know, eating a uh, poor diet the day before. Mm -hmm. um, so many different little things that can affect your mood and how you perform mm -hmm. during the day. Um, so yeah, that's that's why I love being hyper aware all the time. Um, and you know, it's, it can be good and bad at, at times, I guess, but um, yeah, it just puts me back on track. If I'm well, it works for you. Yeah. I think finding something that works for each individual is important. Yeah. Yeah. Hyper aware, guys and girls. I think that is the most important thing. Well, Connor, it's been awesome catching up with you. Um, just been, Kajian's has been flickering in my eye the whole time. <laughs> yeah. staring at it as well. Yeah. Um, but guys and girls, really hope you enjoyed this episode. It's really awesome catching up with Connor. So you're back in the UK in April, April next year. April, April, next, April year. next year, I'll be back. Yeah, so, 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 uh, so when are you going back to Perth? Uh, 11th of November. Okay, so, so spend, not far away. Spend Christmas and summer yeah. over in, in all nice. of a sudden I'll be back here and, and enjoy life in London. Awesome, so we'll have to definitely catch up again. We will, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I Thank think you. I might be actually going over to Australia again, so we're looking oh, okay. to do a meet-up again. At uh, this time we probably will go Perth. Excellent. I'll probably go to Melbourne as well. We Great. Done Melbourne, so. There's a, a good group of Perth guys growing. Oh, yeah. Um, they're so, yeah, super committed guys yeah, and great killing group. it in the yeah, markets yeah, as well. So you'll have to head down so, um, Yeah, it's good. No, thanks. Catch you again. Thanks for having me Pleasure. on. Pleasure. Yeah. Appreciate all the value. They're going to take all these little tips that you're doing. Like, guys and girls, I hope you've, you, you need to really listen to this. You know, when 
when we get the opportunity to catch up with you know our, our full-time successful traders in person we always want to have an opportunity to do that and that's one of the core missions from the start as one of the bigger projects we want to do is is travel around and actually document more of their lifestyle and things like that so we've got a lot of things coming in and there's a lot of people in the woodwork that like to stay in the woodwork that are Absolutely. doing some really big things in the community and it's just honestly it's breathtaking to see so hope you enjoyed this episode and guys and girls we will catch up with you very soon thanks for watching appreciate it again Carl. thanks cheers Cheers guys, bye.